feel like just knowing that the work you you do as a photographer has value regardless of your experience, regardless of your social media follow. Actually, it has nothing to do with your social media following. Like, uh, I feel like a lot of photographers go like, oh, well, I'm not going to charge as much. I'm not as well known on social media. It's like, that doesn't matter. Like if someone wants to hire you to do photos, they see the value of your work. Like you are creating mm-hmm. something valuable um, and you deserve to be compensated well for that. Um, and I know that. Welcome to Nuevo Mark Photography Podcast, an international offering of Simon Cadeagua, the podcast for professionals and enthusiasts to connect and share their stories. I'm Jessica Duque, food photographer and your host. This podcast is brought to you by Sigma, sigmabenelux.com Soho, Brand Studio Whiteybackdrops.com Tether Tools Food Media House Photo Fleets So welcome to No Watermark Photography Podcast, Jordan Hughes, the one and only from High Proof Preacher and Cocktail yes. Camera. How are you today? <laughs> Good. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. This is fun. No, this is so nice. I, I'm really, really curious about all your secrets. If you can, you know, share with us a few of them, it will be super cool. I know you are really... Uh, you know, like a cool guy with information. So you have on your website some guides that people can download if they're subscribed to your email uh, list. And then you can share with them, okay, what is uh, what is this for, the natural light? I saw a guide of five tips for cocktail photography. So this is really right. cool. So I will invite you to all of you to go to his website, cocktailcamera.com. Yep, that's the one. Tell us about yourself you know, in your words, what is that you do? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I usually start by, you know, if someone asks me like, what do you do? I mm-hmm. usually start by saying, you know, commercial uh, photographer, videographer, um, you know, it's always more than that. It's it's like hard to like summarize everything very succinctly, <laughs> you know, because yes. um, usually go from there into like, yeah, like, and, you know, all of my clients for the most part are you know, beverage related. So yes. most of them are liquor brands. Um, it doesn't have to be alcohol related to, but it's like, I've done some coffee and tea and kombucha uh, clients yes. as well. Uh, but yeah. And then with that, like, I also just share about how, you know, I'm not just photographer, videographer, but I'm, I also, you know, frame myself as an educator as well. And that's kind of what I do a lot with social media where on my high proof preacher account, I'm often sharing tips on how to make cocktails. And, um, and then on cocktail camera, you know, it's sharing how to capture them well, because that's a whole other thing as well. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so it's kind of this like, uh, yeah, kind of like two different sides of what I do, where it's like, I, I do the the photography and videography, you know, for brands and, you know, creating that those creative assets but then there's also the educator side of like also showing people how to do what i do uh so yeah that's kind of the the me in a nutshell i feel like <laughs> and was it was it always like this was it always like beverage or did you start with food photography before or how is that right yeah yeah that's a good question i started with uh i mean kind of doing trying to do a little bit of everything which i feel like when you you start out you know, freelancing and doing creative work, it's kind of like, let me just see what, what works. Right. Mm -hmm. So I started out, uh, you know, did some photo stuff on the side, uh, some food, some food photography, some event photography. I was also trying to do some design work. Um, I was just kind of like, I'm just going to see what things I'm good at and what, what ends up paying well. Right. (laughs) So, um, kind of, as I was figuring stuff out, I also, you know, had started this high proof preacher Instagram account. And, um, that was kind of the thing that just started getting more attention where I started working with, uh, kind of some smaller, like local distilleries, Mm -hmm. uh, and I'd be doing some photos for them or helping them with social media and, uh, kind of grew from there where I, I just found, I, I enjoyed the, 
uh, photography side and the cocktail side the most. And that's where I ended up just kind of, um, it's cool that worked out where like, that was the stuff I was enjoying. And it also Mm -hmm. ended up just like, I started getting clients that were, um, yeah, like small liquor brands or distilleries or breweries or stuff like that. So I just ended up going in that direction and um, kind of got to a point where I was doing a few other things, but I was like, I think I just want to go all in on kind of this, this area, because it felt like that had a lot of interest there and I was seeing success there. So I just kind of was like, I'm just going to be a beverage photographer. I'm just going to say that and see what uh-huh. happens, you know, and I feel like there's a certain level and I, I'm sure other photographers would relate to this where like, once you just kind of say something or put it on a business card, people just go like, oh, okay, cool. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. once you say you're a beverage photographer, people just go like, cool. I, I want the beverage photographer to shoot my stuff, you know? So mm-hmm. um, it's kind of like you, yeah, everyone says fake it till you make it. And it's like, I, I did have some experience at least, but there's, there's a certain level of just being like, all right, this is what I do. And people just go like, okay. Like, I believe you. <laughs> so so it's, it's worked out. <laughs> so you found your niche in, uh, in drink photography. And did right. you get any training, a special training, like bartender course or something like that? Right. Good question. Uh, I mean, not really with that. Like, um, I mean, I live in, in Portland, Oregon, on the West Coast, the U.S., uh, which has a pretty, um, pretty thriving bar scene. So... Mm-hmm. Uh, really just kind of learn from just having friends who are bartenders um, Mm -hmm. where, you know, I'd go to their bars and I'd ask them questions and they'd show me stuff. And then, um, you know, getting different books, like uh, there's a book by Death & Co Mm -hmm. uh, that there's several books now that are really good. um, Was just something where the the cocktail thing for me was truly more of a hobby starting out of just something that I was interested in and, and just started learning how to make drinks and um yeah but but wasn't uh wasn't like trained as a bartender or anything like that yeah because there's some art in holding the jigger and pouring in and i I, i've seen a a couple of uh, techniques and i'm not very good at it and i don't (laughs) think i will be a good hand model to do that but i know (laughs) it is an art it is an art sure so yeah i'm talking about cocktails uh does a cocktail photography require any special equipment yeah uh definitely um i mean there's lots of different ways you can do it i mean like when starting out like i just had my camera and you know i just used natural light Mm -hmm. um it was uh, a bit more challenging that way but it's like it's still you can still do that there's there's certainly you know good photographers who who can capture cocktails well and 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 not, not need a whole lot of special equipment. But um, for me, I, I do find it a lot easier if you use um, off-camera flash or kind of some form of of kind of you know artificial light that you yes. can control. Um, I think just especially because you know when you're shooting cocktails or bottles, you know all these things that are glass where they're reflective mm-hmm. or they're transparent. Um, you know, reflections are always tricky. I feel like that's always, you know, when people come to me, they're like, how do I figure out reflections? And there is an element of, um, if you're kind of creating your own light and using off-camera flash, um, you're able to kind of shape those reflections a little more. Uh, I just feel like you have more control over the lighting, which just gives you more control over the the image. And since you're shooting glass and something that's transparent or reflective um you just need to have as much control over the lighting as as you can Mm -hmm. Uh, and for me i I don't necessarily think like oh i want to get rid of reflections i want to shape the reflections um, Mm -hmm. to help give my my image more dimension so um so with that like for me having some sort of off-camera flash various kind of you know soft boxes different modifiers to kind of like help shape the um the light and you can kind of see on the image behind me this isn't mm-hmm. i'm not actually in my studio right now this is like a photo of it but yes um i really like using scrims which are just kind of like these big you know transparent pieces of material um those just really like make your light bigger and softer um and kind of can help the light wrap around 
the cocktail or the bottle or whatever you're mm -hmm. shooting in a more pleasing way. So that's where I always highly recommend like getting some sort of flash or off camera light or LED light and then diffusing it with like a scrim or a diffuser just to soften that light. Yes, because I, I believe reflections are the most uh, one of the most challenging uh, parts of the drink photography. Right. And that yeah. is the reason you're a, you know, your studio is a black, like a dark. Right. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So amazing. now my, my new studio isn't as dark. So I actually have to do a little more work to like, um, you know, I put up like curtains and V flats to kind of yeah. block out the light, you know, but yeah, it does kind of help to have a, you know, a little darker space because it, it just makes the reflections easier. And how do you deal when you have to go on location because you have like atmosphere light and then you have like, right. how, how do you manage that? Yeah. And that's where, again, off camera flash really helps where um, obviously it depends on the location. Some locations just are more difficult. Um, yes. But uh, yeah, when you're shooting in a lot of bars and restaurants where they're a lot of them are, are darker anyway. Mm -hmm. um and when you use a flash you can you know set your exposure to a way to where you can actually remove the the ambient light you know the light in the room and just be using your flash so mm -hmm. that helps a lot i also you know sometimes will bring um little bounce cards you know they're just like little foldable things that i can put on a bar top or table and that helps kind of um maybe block some window light but also helps reflect light you know mm -hmm. so there's different things like that that I can bring with me to try to manipulate the light a little bit but okay. um sometimes when you're shooting on location though it's just you know sometimes locations just aren't set up well for photography and you kind of have to just roll with it and see what yeah. you can get even if it's not perfect you know make it work <laughs> exactly. you're right yeah so I, I I was curious about your your studio because I saw ah oh, it's dark and I have mine that is all white and it's all yeah. like and I don't use only natural light I combine both yeah. and now I'm making a photo of a it's, it's for a product and then I'm struggling yeah. with the reflections because it, I'm using a plexiglass to pose all the you know the elements and then all yeah. the reflections from the ceiling because it's also white and then I have to use like a big cardboard on top just to you oh. know try to manage that and it's like oh yeah. no. me and my great idea of having the whole studio white like <laughs> <laughs> oh, but having a whole white studio can be nice too because you can like bounce light off the walls or ceilings if you want so there's you know there's pros and cons to both you know? yeah but yeah. in the end we manage <laughs> we are problem problem yeah. solvers yes right okay yeah. that is amazing <laughs> in your opinion what makes a good cocktail photo Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely a matter of opinion. Like for, for me, like I, uh, I personally just really like cocktail images that, um, that, that feel natural. Uh, cause there's, there, there is a certain level of, or, or there's a certain side of cocktail photography where some people can, and it's not like one's better or worse. It's more just kind of what I favor, <laughs> you yeah. know, for me personally, but you know, some people can um, get really in because part of the fun of cocktails is like, there's a really fun visual element of like garnishes and different, you know, rims and colors and all of that, yes. where um, for me, I'm like, I, I don't want to like, like I want my images to feel like, realistic um i guess it's kind of the editorial feel you know where like I, i want my cocktail photos to feel like you're you're like sitting at a bar and you're like oh look at like i i want to drink this drink you know yes. versus ones that you know again you can have fun with garnishes and get kind of crazy propping and stuff but um there's there's been a lot of cocktail photos i've seen where i'm like i just like no one could drink that because the garnish is so big or it would you know it'd go in your face if you try to take a sip or um not that it's like not fun and with photography you can have fun um yeah but it's like sometimes I just see these photos where I was like that's not a very realistic drink or concept um so that's where like for me uh again just how I approach drink photos and, and how I even set them up and how I style them is like I try to have it um look like you're you're at the bar at a table 
and you're just like seeing a drink. So I'll usually have very minimal propping where maybe I'll have, you know, a dish off to the side or maybe mm -hmm. like some, some bar equipment kind of framing it. But um, I try to have it where it's like drinks that are something that you could actually serve at a bar. So nothing that has like, you know, fireworks coming out of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, something you could actually serve at a bar and I want like the viewer to actually, you know, see it and be like, whoa, like I, you know, feels like they're sitting at a bar being served a drink is kind of what I usually aim for. Um, but again, that's just, you know, my preference in my opinion. Yes. Um, and that is by no means like the correct one. That's just kind of how I approach it. Yeah. And I definitely made some of those mistakes like, oh, I'm so passionate about garnishes and it's like bigger than the drink. Definitely. Uh, <laughs> So I have to take your course. I will learn from you. <laughs> so um, how's your equipment right now? Okay, what, what are you using to make those beautiful photos? And how did you evolve? Yeah. Okay, how, what was your first camera? Uh, my first camera was a Fujifilm X-T1. Okay. Uh, so for a few years, shot on Fujifilm, um, had a Fujifilm X-H1 later. So I, I had a few like Fujifilm cameras, um, started with that and shot with that for, for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, started adding various sliding things, you know, yes. just got like a speed light, uh, just like a little, you know, what you typically put on your camera, but I'd put that on a light stand with like a white umbrella mm -hmm. and I'd use, use that off camera. Um, I think after that, I, I got like a few more speed lights so I could use multiple lights at once. Um, you know, got like a an LED light so that I could do some video work. Uh, and then, you know, from there, it's kind of like you just kind of slowly start upgrading uh, where I, I feel like I did pretty good with really using the gear I had, you know, mm -hmm. as, as much as I could. And then kind of my approach when it comes to upgrading is like there's no need to upgrade until the equipment you have um is limiting you so like I started feeling like oh like my I wish my speed lights were a little more powerful or like mm -hmm. you know there were some some shoots I was on where oh I was missing some shots because like the speed lights wouldn't recycle fast enough you yes. know so I needed something with more power so I could shoot faster mm -hmm. so it was more like as I started identifying things where it's like this would actually help me be more efficient or to do more better work yes. then i started upgrading and got um i use a lot of godox lights uh so got some of their more powerful you know strobes um that just allowed me to shoot for longer um that recycle faster you know have a little more powerful and then could use um with those bigger strobes you can you know they have a bowens mount so you could put on soft boxes and different things so yes. um I feel like I did pretty good of kind of slowly upgrading based on just getting more work and getting better and being like, I could identify what equipment would actually help me versus just upgrading, just to upgrade, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like some people do that where it's like, well, I just want to get the best stuff and then you only use it, you know, a little bit, you know, so I feel like I kind of slowly upgraded over time and now I have quite a few different lights and cameras and things. And now I use a Sony alpha system. So oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so all still kind of mirrorless cameras, but um, have the Sony a7R4 for kind of my studio work. Uh, that one just has a ton of megapixels, you know, and then I have a few other kind of various Sony cameras as well. Um, so really enjoying that system and, and that one's been good for both kind of photo and video as well. So, yeah. Amazing. So because we have worked with important brands, how is that experience? Did you look for them? Did they look for you? Because the, the audience wants to know, okay, how can I work with the, with a big brand? Right. Yeah. I mean, um, for me, it's. I haven't done a whole lot of kind of outreach as far as like pursuing brands. Um, I guess like a lot of what I do on Instagram is kind of considered marketing. Um, a lot of it's just like sharing the work I've done. And um, I feel like, you know, part of how I've gotten in with big brands is honestly with agencies where, um, 
you know, I feel like starting out, it's kind of like working with all these smaller brands and it's someone who works for the brand. And I feel like it, you get to a point where, um, you know, a brand gets so big where they, they just start hiring agencies to kind of do a lot of their, uh, you know, creative work and marketing work for them. Um, and so with that, I've actually really enjoyed working with big brands because I'm working with their agency. Um, mm -hmm. And with an agency, it's like if you get in good with one agency, they have multiple clients, right? Yes. So they might hire you for one project. And if you do really good on that project, they're like, well, we really like working with this person and we have multiple clients who are going to need shoots. Yes. Um, so I feel like that's that's likely how I've grown is I've, I've just started working with mul multiple agencies um, who, you know, serve multiple clients. Uh, and then, you know, you just kind of get multiple asks through, through that same agency. And um, so now I, I very much prefer working with agencies versus, um, and I still work with people who work directly mm -hmm. with a brand, but it's, I feel like it's nice as a photographer, as a creative to work with an agency because they, we kind of speak the same language. Yes. Um, you know, someone at a liquor brand, they're thinking about how to sell their product. And they, they, there's so many other things they have to think about besides the creative aspects. So yes. they might not fully understand things like image licensing and, you know, usage rights mm -hmm. and all of that stuff that, that we have to think about they're just thinking well i'm hiring you to take photos so these photos are mine now and it's like well there's more to it than that and that's where an agency understands you know creative assets and some of the legal things around that uh so there's pros and cons though right because sometimes with working for a really big brand um mm -hmm. it can be a little stressful and they might have really big demands you know yeah. so there's that side of it that can be really hard but um, for the most part, I've I've really enjoyed working for the the larger brands that I, I have worked for, uh, mainly again because it's it's you know there's like these PR agency people who who understand what what goes into creating what what we create and they understand the value of it. Uh, so with that, I feel like it, in some ways it you know again pros and cons to everything, but some ways it can be easier with a yes. big brand because those agency people um they just understand a little more what goes into it uh, but honestly i still really enjoy working with smaller brands too because there's less rules right there's there's more mm -hmm. kind of like sometimes they're just like we like what you do you just do your thing and it's kind of like exactly cool you, imagine. you know so <laughs> right yeah so there's yeah there's pluses and minuses to all of it so i kind of like doing a mix of some of the big brands some of the small brands and Awesome. As long as you're still having fun, it's, it's good. <laughs> yeah, that, I think that is the most important part. Do not forget that you're having fun of what you're doing. Right. So that is, that is sure. the coolest part. So, and now a word from our sponsor. I want to tell you about Food Media House, a creative powerhouse that will transform your brand with unique and bold visuals. With experience in photography and creative direction, they will captivate your audience and bring your vision to life. From recipes to food styling, they create content for social, web, and marketing campaigns with irresistible visuals. Based in Los Angeles, they collaborate remotely with brands from around the world. Contact now through MediaHouse.com. Back to the episode. So, can you tell me something about this challenge you have that is called Hit Me With Your Zest? I love it. I love the last winner, <laughs> and to me, it was like hilarious, original, and it couldn't be it couldn't be more right about the title of the of the challenge. How did <laughs> this idea came from? Yeah, so yeah, so the whole challenge is capturing kind of what has been dubbed the the zest shot, where um, it's you know a, a very simple technique for a lot of cocktails, where you know you finish the drink by taking a you know a strip of you know orange or lemon, some sort of citrus peel, you know gently squeezing it over the top and you know it's this light mist of oil coming out mm -hmm. and it's funny like when you see that in quote real life it's like a split second like it's very quick uh oftentimes you you barely even see the oil coming out because it's it's not like actual juice coming out it's just like this burst of oil so it was something that i just thought was a fun way of getting people into drink photography where i feel like uh 
another kind of big drink photography photo is just like the splash photo of just like dropping a chunk of ice into the cocktail and it goes <laughs> so that that's where i feel like um you know that splash photo is cool but it's always a little like you just made a beautiful cocktail why would you splash it all over the place where where this is like something that it's an actual technique you would do mm-hmm. but it's something that's like um it's a lot more intricate it's delicate and it it takes a lot more focus to capture versus yes. just dropping a chunk of ice into a drink so it's something where it like it has this similar wow factor of an image but it's something that's like something you'll actually do and it's it's beautiful and it it takes some knowledge and practice to figure mm-hmm. out so it was a way of just kind of introducing people to drink photography and and how cool and exciting it can be while also teaching them about cocktails mm-hmm. um so that was kind of the the approach um yeah and it's just something where once you figure out how to do it too it's just like oh like you're kind of hooked uh mm-hmm. so that's something where it's just like it's just a fun way to to get people into it and it it is something that I feel like brought a lot of people together. There was like bartenders doing it. There's photographers doing it. Um, so it was just a, a cool thing. And so now I'm I'm planning on doing it kind of every every year, like every summer, we'll do a new death shot challenge. But um, yeah, it's been really fun. <laughs> it is amazing. Yeah, it is a it is a beautiful technique. And uh, like you said, like compared to the to the splashes, and I, I and I wanted to know your opinion about the splashes. There was a a season that I the only thing that I browse on my Instagram like splashes, splashes, splashes of right. coffee, tea, <laughs> da da da. So right. it's like okay, who's, who who drinks like this? <laughs> like it's good right. when you do it like once. Okay, you prove it. Right. You made yeah. it. Let it rest. <laughs> right. <Da-da. laughs> yeah, it's like I'm. I don't want to like you know be down on this because you can do a splash shot well I feel like but like you said it's like it it shouldn't be every photo right it's yeah. you know too much of a good thing you know <laughs> so, yeah specialist on splashes right. <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, no 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 okay and right. what are you working right now and or what is your last job I heard and I know that you are uh, releasing a book that is called Twist yeah. can you ta- tell us about it Yeah, yeah. So it's my first first book. Yeah, it's uh it's a cocktail book. Uh, it's, uh you know, started out with like um I can't remember how many recipes we started out with, but it's it's 60, you know, cocktail photos and recipes in there as well as um I kind of have starts out with my approach to making cocktails and it, you know, It helps to kind of walk people through like how to kind of create your own drinks mm-hmm. uh, with kind of starting with like, here's kind of the classics. Here's like these, you know, drinks like the old fashioned and the margarita, you know, stuff that people know and it's yes. good the test of time to like really learn those, master those, and then how to kind of go further from there. Um, so a lot of the drinks you'll see like very traditional, you know, like I said, old fashioned margarita, martini, Nick and then there'll be, Negroni yeah all of those and then um so have like recipes for those and then there'll be recipes kind of next to those of like well if you change this ingredient or start swapping you know the bitters out or the syrups um so it's kind of all these little these twists on Mm -hmm. classics um so it's all kind of aimed at showing you like how to start with kind of cocktail formats and then how to build on them and change them into your own drinks Um, and then of course it's just full of just tons of cocktail imagery and I don't think there's any splash photos in there, but, uh, actually I think there's one, there might be okay. one splash photo. Um, okay. 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 <laughs> uh, one. It's subtle though. You have to like look for it. It's like more subtle. Um, but, uh, yeah, some of, some of my, I'd say some of my best photography work I've done is in there, um, which is cool. And then it's it's been tricky because you know i did all of this photography work and they're like you can't really share it online because they're like we want it to just be like the book um you know you want people to buy the book you can't just have it be a bunch of photos you posted online somewhere so it's hard though because i'm like some of these photos are are just like some of my favorite photos ever um uh, but they just they live in the book <laughs> Because you were involved yeah. in everything, preparation, photography, writing it. Yeah. How long right. did you work on this? Um, well, 
I was supposed to have a lot longer, I think. Um, it's been tricky with this last year with like supply chain issues and all of that, where all my deadlines got moved up because they wanted to have it, you know, released by the holidays, ideally. So um, I think I wrote it all in, I want to say four or five months. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I thought I'd have, you know, a few months to do photos and like actually have 30 days. So, uh-huh. <laughs> so I basically like that month, I just like uh, squeezed in some client work, but like I had a schedule of like, I have to shoot like, you know, four or five drinks every day and each one has to have a different setup. And uh, it was a lot of work. Like I, I mean, I was like shooting all day and then I'd have dinner and like, okay, I have to shoot some drinks tonight, and, you know? <laughs> so it was a, a lot to get it all done. Oh, um, only you or do, or do you have a, an assistant to, to help you? I did it. I did it all me. Yeah. Uh, I think if I was to do it again, <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> if I was to do it again, I'd be like, I definitely need an assistant because it was a lot of like making the drinks styling the drinks capturing edit like it was it was a lot um cleaning after everything yeah all the cleaning yeah it's like a lot a lot of work so that's what i was like i mean by the time i was into it i was like all right i just gotta get this done but if i ever do another book definitely hiring people that <laughs> help assist well standing ovation for that because uh oh, it, thank is, you. Yeah. it is a hard <laughs> job and you do it by yourself i can't wait to have that book with me and you can go to his <laughs> website and you can pre-order it and you can have yeah. all his beautiful photos and recipes of the classic cocktails with with his twist that is twist. nice it's, yep. called, it's called <laughs> twist nice name by the way i love hey, it thanks Okay, and uh, what else are you doing at the moment? Uh, so you wrap up the the book, and uh, do you have something yeah. new with the educational platform that you are that you have? Yeah, um, I'm working on a uh, kind of so cocktail camera is my educational platform, and I'm working on a cocktail camera 101. So the course I have right now is, um, you know, cocktail camera pro. So it's more of kind of the big master class kind of walking through lighting and cameras and how I shoot on location it just kind of shows you kind of everything I do essentially um but I've had a lot of people asking me like hey like I just use my smartphone or I just have you know an entry-level DSLR I don't necessarily want to be a pro but I just want to take better cocktail photos uh Mm -hmm. so I'm working on a course that's it's a lot shorter uh it's less expensive um it'll probably be like 10 videos and it's just kind of walking people through the basics of like here's how to use your phone or if you have an inexpensive camera here's how to get the most out of what you have um and i'll there's not going to be like special lighting like flashes or anything but i'm at least going to show like you know here's a few lighting tips or here's like a few inexpensive things you can get to to help with your lighting or do better lighting um, that's just more of a, a 101 level that's it's more for anybody, not just photographers, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's my next project that I'm working on, which will hopefully, um, we'll see, I have all this, you know, book promotion stuff to do in the next few months, but hopefully, um, that will be out soon. Uh, but that's kind of the next big project for me is, is putting that course out. And then after that, I'm working on a video course mm-hmm. on how to shoot video. So there's, there's always more courses to film. So. Yes. <laughs> That is super yeah. nice. So, because not everything is perfect and all the photographers make mistakes. Can you guide us through how were those mistakes that you remember that you learned something something from them and help you to go through your career and being a successful drink photographer as you are right now? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's almost like what, what mistakes should I choose, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I feel like something, both for myself and nearly every kind of new photographer I've talked to, there's kind of this, um, this like insecurity, you know, maybe we'll call it imposter syndrome, or maybe mm-hmm. it's just like simply not knowing your worth. But I feel like a lot of photographers, myself included, and, and most people starting out, it's like, um, you kind of go into marketing yourself or maybe be talking with some of your first potential clients and, and being like, oh, like, uh, maybe I'm not going to charge very much or maybe I'll, you know, just kind of making excuses for 
for you, like not being very good or being new or not having much experience. Um, and I feel like it, it's something where it's hard to communicate to someone like be more confident. I know it doesn't work that way, but um, like confidence just kind of comes with time. But uh, I feel like just knowing that the work you you do as a photographer has value regardless of your experience regardless of your social media follow actually it's nothing to do with your social media following like uh, i feel like a lot of photographers go like oh well i'm not going to charge as much i'm not as well known on social media it's like that doesn't matter like if someone wants to hire you to do photos they see the value of your work like you are creating mm -hmm. something valuable um and you deserve to be compensated well for that um and i know that's that's a whole big thing that's that's still challenging for photographers to figure out like well what is you know, pricing is, is always just a tricky thing as a photographer, as a freelancer. It kind of is the Wild West where every photographer has different rates and different things they charge for. So again, I know that's really tricky because it's like, especially when you're new, you just don't know what to charge. But it's more the element of just knowing like, okay, re regardless of your experience or, or, or all of that, just knowing that like, if, if you're talking to someone, if someone wants to hire you, like, you you do provide a valuable service and you your art is valuable um and so just not selling yourself short not making excuses for yourself mm -hmm. um, of why you aren't valuable um i just think that's it just like makes me sad when i hear photographers doing that because it's like no like w what you do is good and like there, there's no need to make excuses for yourself of why you should do it for cheap or god forbid for free you know mm -hmm. um so again i like i said that's like a hard thing to to just be like you know to tell someone that or to to fully grip that because it, it's just easier to be like oh i'll give someone a discount because i'm new you know like i, I understand mm -hmm. that insecurity and that feeling because i've been there but um i would just love for photographers of all experience levels just to just to stop and be like no what i do is valuable and this is uh you know that there's no other you know field other than the creative fields where people try to be like oh no i'm i'm gonna charge less or, or whatever or do this for free it's like no it's like you're this is your work and this is what you do so um yeah that's that's at least one thing <laughs> i think one of the most important like give yourself the, sure. the value you deserve and that the, the work yeah. that you do is wonderful and and we are all different. I mean, I don't need to make photos like you to to be a good photographer. I mean, right. everyone has their own touch. And it's right. good. I yeah. mean, if you know how to uh, manage all the details that you teach, like, for example, reflections yeah. and this and that, and the proportions of, of, of things, like, okay, you will be like a great photographer. That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. So, yeah, you can do it. You can do it. Go for it. So don't give any yeah. discounts. No. <laughs> right <laughs> okay what is that photo in your mind that you haven't taken yet mm, that i haven't taken i know it's tricky it's like i've done a lot of photos so it's like what uh what have i not done that i'd really love to do um i don't know i feel like uh there's there's probably a few where um there there's been a few photographers that i've followed in um i don't know if they're in russia or they're just kind of like uh eastern europe maybe where uh -huh. where yeah where it's like these different design elements that are you know floating but uh -huh. it's not just floating it's like you know the liquids coming out just perfectly and you uh -huh. know um i've like dabbled with a little bit of that and using wires and you know compositing different things in there uh, but that's something I'd really like to explore a little more and get better at. Because um, it's like anyone could have different style elements kind of floating with Photoshop, but also being able to have floating and liquid and all of these things coming out that are just perfect. Mm -hmm. and, you know, that takes a lot of time and work. So um, that's something I'd, I'd like to mess around with more. I haven't done as much of that. So oh. um, I've done a few very simple approaches, but I was like, oh, it's fun. Like for me, just like capturing liquid in general is just really fun mm -hmm. uh, just because it's so unpredictable and it's not something you can just 
you know, you have to capture it so quick. Liquid won't just stay suspended in the air. You know? So mm-hmm. um, I really enjoy the art of that. So that's something where I was like multiple kind of liquids coming out and um, just perfectly, you know, so that's all, all stuff I'd, I'd love to mess around with. More. So what is so your funny. favorite drink? What's your favorite drink? Favorite drink. Yeah, I feel like it kind of uh, half the year, it's probably a Sazerac. Uh, so kind of like an old fashioned. Um, I usually do half cognac, half rye whiskey, mm-hmm. uh, Peychaud's bitters, um, a little bit of sugar to balance it out. And there's an absinthe rinse on the glass. Okay. Um, so very spirit forward, more something I drink kind of fall and winter. And then um, other half the year, honestly, I just really love good margarita. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's like probably, that's probably what I end up making the most for, for friends and probably for myself. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's kind of like spring, summer favorite margarita rest of the year. So you are more right. a tequila guy. <laughs> um, Yeah. I mean, I really enjoy just agave spirits in general, agave uh, tequila and, and mezcal and um, other ones like uh, Rixia and uh, yeah, I just really enjoy Amazing. Uh, got my spirits. Yeah. Okay. And where do you find your inspiration when you are going to make a photo or creating, you know, when you want to create a cocktail? Yeah. I mean, um, inspiration. Yeah. I mean, a, a lot of times my inspiration comes through, uh, I mean, different things, but um, lately a lot of it's been like some color theory stuff and that's something I, I touch on in the course a little bit of um, on a basic level you know complementary colors and you know you pull up a color wheel and you're just finding like this color and then the color on the opposite side is what complements it you know mm-hmm. um, a lot of times I'll I'll see like certain color combinations just in the world and being like oh that's a cool combination like I want to figure out how to use that in a photo um so uh yeah so a a lot of my drink photos if you you know take a closer look there's you know I use a lot of different surfaces and um it's not like I use really bright crazy colors but I do try to use kind of specific color schemes of like okay if my drink is kind of red orange I'm going to try and incorporate kind of these um kind of teal blue green elements into it that mm-hmm. complement it um or like uh yeah or even with that of just finding different ways for for contrast uh whether that's different textures of like um you know mixing kind of smooth and rough textures i use a lot of like wood surfaces in yes. my images uh, which i feel like contrast well uh, with a lot of cocktails, which are in, you know, glassware that are very smooth. A lot of drinks are kind of just these very kind of silky textures. Um, so contrasting that with, uh, with rougher wooden textures or stone is, is fun. Um, and then of course, seeing other photographers too, like some of my kind of inspirations early on were, uh, uh, one was a guy named Eric Medsker. Um, he's a photographer in New York. Um, he also, he, you know, mainly does, uh, you know, food and drink photography and, um, shoots for some really big bars in New York. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of his stuff and like the way he does his lighting was a, a big inspiration for me. Um, and how he captures like bartenders and all of that, that was a, a big, uh, yeah. Um, we've only talked online, like we haven't met in real life yet, but we've, we just kind of talk on Instagram and, um, he's someone I try to just shout out, uh, whenever I can, cause he's someone that. Um, I've drawn a lot of inspiration from. And then um, another one is Shannon Sturgis. Uh, mm-hmm. She Her Instagram's uh, Shannon Shoots Cocktails. Um, and uh, yeah, just her her cocktail imagery. She's done, um, I don't think she's written any books, but she, she's photographed a lot of cocktail books. Um, so there's a, a lot of books you'll find that have her images in them. And they're just, I'm convinced she can't take a bad photo. It's not even possible for her. <laughs> so all of her her drink photos are just beautiful like you could just you know stare at them for hours sort of thing so um yeah those two people are kind of the two from a a photography perspective that I've I've really got a lot of inspiration from and and they've also just both been very supportive and encouraging of me as well so um yeah they're kind of two favorites 
Amazing. Well, and to close this uh, interview, wonderful interview, I would like to ask you, what would be your advice for those photographers who want to do what you do? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, what well, you could take my course. That will help. <laughs> uh, that will be handy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, at least my course itself is just, you know, it's focused on cocktail photography. So if that's something you want to dive into um i i honestly was like part of why i created it is like i i wasn't seeing much photography education that was focused on beverages I feel like there's a fair amount of food photography education and a lot of different kind of focuses for photography but uh, aside from a few youtube videos it was like i couldn't find a whole lot of resources that were specific to capturing you know, drinks so um if that's a focus you're interested in that's definitely something that would help um yeah and then also just um yeah i feel like a, a way to to start is you know seeing you know de depending on where you live and you know some people live in small smaller towns where there's mm -hmm. maybe less bars or areas might be a little, a little trickier but even just going to bars or restaurants for me it was distilleries early on to be like hey like I'm interested in in what you do and you know I'm interested in cocktails and spirits and um and just being like hey could I like uh you know do some photos for you maybe for uh you know a trade or just to kind of like get some practice doing it it's not necessarily like um I don't recommend necessarily just going into these places and being like hey I'll shoot for you for free mm -hmm. um but being like hey like this is a value add for me like i want um you know drink photos for my portfolio i want to practice doing this um and it's like if if you want like i can give you a few photos for your social media sort of thing or trade for product making sure it's like the value is it's not just like i'm providing a pre -ser free service but something of like hey like this is for me to grow and to improve as a photographer um and it gives some of these companies an opportunity to see what you can do mm -hmm. so that's where i would kind of go into these different distilleries and i would like capture some photos of their bottles and their cocktails and then i would post it on my social media and they would be like oh thanks this is great and then they ended up some of them would come back to me like a few weeks maybe some of them were like even a few months later and like hey could we actually like that was so cool when you came in that one time for your portfolio could we hire you to, to do a shoot for us you know so I always try to frame it as like, I'm doing a shoot for me, for my portfolio. Would you let me do that? Uh, versus like, hey, I'm going to come in and shoot for you and give you all this free stuff. Um, I feel like that's a good way to to position it because it's like you're doing something to help yourself to get more images that and some practice in this field, um, but also allows these other kind of brands or companies in your community to see you and see you work uh so that's that's one way to approach it it's just like see you know who in your area is is doing stuff that you're interested in and maybe that's not cocktails maybe that's coffee shops maybe yes. that's breweries um for me it was like you know uh, there's this kombucha company and they have a tea company too so i'd like to go into their tea shops and i'd shoot like their tea uh so stuff like that where it's there's like a lot of different ways you can do it um and i feel like once you kind of have a few photos kind of built up in your portfolio then you can start taking that and going to you know you can find a, a brand on instagram or wherever that you're like oh this would be cool to shoot for them and shooting them a dm or finding an email somewhere and being like hey here's all these photos that i've done um would love the opportunity to chat and see what it would look like to, to do photos for you so um it's a bit scrappy i feel like but um it's kind of a fun challenge too of like finding out like who can I do photos for who can I like reach out to and finding out mm -hmm. how to reach out to them um it can be frustrating but it can also be if you frame it as like this is a fun challenge it can it can also be fun so <laughs> that is amazing Jordan I really really enjoyed this conversation you are so kind and so open and so amazing you are an excellent oh, photographer I mean your photos are <gasps> like oh amazing thank you so much for accepting the, the invitation to this podcast oh yeah thank you so much for having me yeah i really appreciate it all very uh yeah very excellent thoughtful questions i really appreciate the interview so yeah
Well, thank you all for <laughs> listening and for watching this episode. I'm going to leave all the information of Jordan on the description box. So don't worry. You can find him on Instagram on two accounts. So one is Cocktail Camera and the other one is High Proof. Uh, the other one is High Proof Preacher. Yeah. Yes. Your website? <laughs> so main website, CocktailCamera.com. Uh, there's also HyperPreacher.com, which is, uh, you know, Hyper Preacher is more kind of cocktail recipes, how to make cocktails. Cocktail Camera is more of the photography side and how to learn that stuff. So. Amazing. So on his website, you can find the book, the courses. So don't forget to jump and, you know, sign up immediately because he has a waiting list and he's amazing. So <laughs> thank you so much and cheers to this uh, episode. See you on the next one. Bye. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. Bye.